Hey guys, Fuljay here. How are you guys all doing? So today, a little bit different video. We're gonna see PS5 teardown and it's gonna be my reaction. So this is the first time I'm watching this and up close and personal look at the console hardware. So basically what is inside the hood of this beast, upcoming beast that's waiting for us in the store in the middle of November. And we know the price, $399. It's gonna be digital edition. Optical disk drive edition for $199, but that being said, we're gonna see CPU, GPU, and I believe any, you know, any component, every component in this console. So, that being said, uh, let's play this video. Okay, so from the very beginning, yeah, they're saying this is done by professional, and there's no need to do it. There's no really need to do it. It's, uh, yeah, you're gonna lose your guarantee, you know? Here we go, PlayStation 5 tear down. Let's see. PlayStation 5 is. Mm. This thing is huge, man. It's larger than a PS4. Yeah, yeah. USB Type C port to USB Type. 10 gigabytes per second. Well, that's that's a huge step. Yeah. And it has a two slots. Yeah, yeah. HDMI port, yeah. No more uh, AC ports because nobody owns old TVs nowadays. Air vents, yeah. This is where this neon lights comes from. I saw it from the trailer. Okay, so this is like a pult that holds it uh, vertically. Interesting. Hmm. Wow. I like more horizontal stand, you know, uh, in every gen. So, any console that we had before, I always use horizontal stand. I never had any port for any console. And that's just me, you know. Let me know in the comments below. What do you prefer, vertical or horizontal stand? I believe both are good, but dust can, you know... Uh, can kick in pretty, uh, you know, pretty badly when you have it place it down, I believe. So I guess vertical is better. You know. So that's the cooling fan. Thing is huge. Wow. Mm -hmm. Two dust catchers. So now it goes the real thing. It's going under the hood. We're gonna see where the CPU GPU is situated, you know. Uh, probably also, you know, we're gonna see now motherboard, everything what's inside. And it's pretty unusual to watch this before the console is out. So now it's removing the fan, all right. And there's many screws to, you know, to get rid of. Hmm. And this thing, yeah, I hope, hopefully it's really quiet. Also, as they're saying, but in the future it's gonna be like, a, you know, jet engine, you know, mark my words, this thing's gonna be limited by seven Ultra years, HD eight years. Ray, We're gonna talk about that after the video. Ultra HD Blu-ray drive unit. Reducing drive noise and vibration with the disc spin. That's a good thing. Mm. 
All right, so we're getting to the motherboard part. He's removing the shield. Okay, so whatever that is, now that he got rid of, here we have CPU, here we have cores inside a GPU or CPU. I'm not an expert to this, but I can assume that is, uh, what that is, let's see. Yeah, this is supposed to be cores, eight cores. Ah, CPU, yes, yes, AMD Ryzen X8664. GPU, can handle 10.3 teraflops. Sixteen gigs GDDR6. So that's insane, man. SSD storage is built inside, yes, of course. It has a custom SSD controller. PS5では長期で安定した高い冷却性能を実現するためこの機能は液体金属を採用しました我々は2年以上前からこの液体金属を採用するための準備をしてきました Cooling mechanism, yeah. So this has a purpose. Yeah. This motherboard is, I mean, it's really like a big computer, really. PS5's heat sink. So they also used heat pipe previous generations. And it's really good design, I have to say. You know, the shape. Everything, you know, in every gen, they're trying to move forward, trying to do more futuristic looking console. Now this is all the plastic, I believe, you know. But there's so many things here on the table. And I like these white plates, really, you know, that's the first thing that we saw uh, when we saw, you know, the price and everything. There we go, that's the end of the video, basically. Play has no limits. Yeah, we're gonna talk about that now. My speculations on that, and what do you think, guys? Also, so okay, let's talk about um, things that we saw. Okay, so 16 gigs GDDR6. So basically, they're doubling the speed now of the RAM. It was 8 gigs of RAM on both PS4 Pro and PS4 regular and slim. So what that means now? It's reducing loading times. Now, they're talking about loading times still, so this console will provide loading times at some point in the future. We don't know when exactly, but we know that significant improvement is gonna be between PS4 and PS5, but games in the near future gonna have these loading times. So this is something that is really well known, you know? From the very beginning, if you remember, in 2013 when the PS4 was out, we didn't expect any loading times, it was really fast. But as the, you know, console generation life cycle is going, you know, to the end, we're seeing a bunch of spinning cycles, we see some circles, because console show, uh, shows its age, it's perfectly normal, you know, and nothing wrong with that, they're going forward. But I think, you know, uh, just by releasing PS5, now they're, they are open for new possibilities, there's no question about it that they're gonna be limited for seven, eight years. 16 gigs of GDDR6, so we're talking about uh, this bandwidth, this big, huge step that they're uh, trying to do. They, get, they can't, you know, forget about limitations now because I know PS6 is gonna be around the corner around eight, nine years, so... And one of the reasons, you know, why, why am I stopping buying new consoles, basically? Because uh, Mark Cerny said in the conference, if you, if you saw the conference, he said they're going to provide, they're going to have a familiar pro programming model. And similar, you know, similar programming models 
and tech inside. So not so much of a big difference, except uh, RAM, CPU is better, uh, clock speed is better, and GPU AMD Reason 2. So it's like a, you know, next generation. But if you see now games that are coming out for the PS4, uh, they're pretty much, you know, they're not out of its time. It's still, it's, uh, it's going forward. So my speculations, I think, uh, is it worth buying it? Let's say if you skipped this 8th gen, if you skipped PS4, Xbox One, uh, totally, why not? So you should also, you also pre-order it. I don't have to assume it because uh, it's gonna have backwards compatibility. Uh, you're gonna be able to play PS4 games on your PS5 and in more higher resolution. Now, how much people owns AK television? That's the question. This console is not is not gonna support AK. I can say that because we know what is AK. So 4K on PS4 is for the video and for the pictures. So we knew that seven years ago when console came out. For the PS5, it's gonna be the same thing but uh, they're hitting 2K and 4K 60 frames per second. So uh, we can expect that now. They're gonna do remaster editions of some games on previous gen and they're gonna be able to do it. But uh, 8K is gonna be only video and pictures. I'm, I'm really skeptical about that. You know what is 8K? So guys, uh, 8K is much more sharper. I believe double, it's double sharp it's a little sharper than uh, 4K, and I didn't experience 4K, only only maybe in stores. I saw it just for a few seconds, and I only... I, right away, I knew at that point, like, why would I watch even movie in 4K? When I have 1080p, 30 frames per second, you know. So, uh, that being said, I can uh, certainly say that... I'm not gonna buy this console because I'm really fine with PS4, it has everything, it has a DVD, it has a DVD drive, also like PS5 will have, but Blu-ray works fine for movies, games, YouTube is working great on PS4, so there's no, it, they're not actually limited. It's all about a business that they're doing, they need to provide new consoles for us to going forward, they need to sell their product, they need to, you know, that's their business, they can stay with the PS4. But they're saying they're limited, this is why they have to go forward. And let me know guys in the comments below, will you buy this console? Is it worth it? CPU is great, uh, GPU is also good, as I saw. And uh, big step is gonna be the only RAM, I believe. But if you see, you know, nowadays if you see the graphics, that is, that is insane, really, what PS4 is capable of. Ghost of Tsushima is out. The Last of Us Part 2 we played. The Last of Us Part uh, 2 also was a great game. But why why releasing Ratchet & Clank on PS5? It also looks like a childish game. You know, this is not a next gen, for example, from my point of view. And Godfall. Godfall game, RPG game on PS5. Really, expecting that in 2020. That's... Uh, that... That can be like that. That is not a triple A title that people is gonna be there for uh, you know two or three months. They're gonna play it maybe for uh, one month and they're gonna get bored with it. They're gonna move forward for the real triple A titles. You know, you know, uh, Resident Evil 8 is coming out. That's for example, triple A title. So, as as in Creed, these things. So, we can really see the next gen, you know, new generation, new graphics. Godfall is not a new graphics, that's basically, can, that can be done on a PS4, but they're not gonna do it. They're gonna do it on a PS5 to sell the system better. See how this works. And they said, Sony said, Horizon Zero Dawn Forbidden West is gonna be out, and Spider-Man uh, Miles Morales is gonna be out for PS4, because console is still capable of running that. Basically, no question about it. They're gonna be limited for the next 7-8 years with PS5, and PS6 is gonna be on the corner so yeah that's my speculations let me know what do you think will you buy digital edition or optical disk drive that being said uh, that's the video till the next time see you soon and catch you later